Good morning, everyone. This is Dustin Miller, Director of Experience and Innovation here at the Dallas Arboretum. And we are here for Plant Lab Live. This is our second weekly Plant Lab Live. And we're actually here in the incredible edible learning gallery in the Rory Myers Children's Adventure Garden. So if you're just joining us, uh, we do this lab every Friday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, with some simple at-home um, things that you can do. Uh, so for today's lesson, we're actually looking at edible plant parts. And if you are able to, run to your kitchen, run to your pantry, and find some fruits and veggies that you have in your home. And we're gonna use them for our lesson. Don't worry, you can eat them later. Um, so I'm just giving everyone a few minutes here to hop online. And we're nice and windy. Um, so once again, this is Plant Lab Live. Uh, my name is Dustin Miller. I'm Director of Experience and Innovation. And we're live in the incredible edible learning gallery here in the Rory Myers Children's Adventure Garden. So I'm on property today. Last week I came to you from my kitchen. Um, today I'm actually here taking care of the education plants and animals in the garden and working with our hydroponics. So I'm here on property and it's a gorgeous morning. Once again, this is edible plant parts. So run to your kitchen, run to your pantry, find fruits and veggies that you have. And we're gonna take a look at some of the things that we eat every day and maybe we don't think about where they come from. Uh, we know they're plants, but they all have a certain function on that plant and some of these may surprise you so i'm sure students you've seen a very similar chart to this in your classroom give me a wave or a heart if you've seen this chart whether you're a current student or a former student in your lifetime at some point all right we're getting some here so let's start with an easy one I've got all my faux produce here, my faux deuce. Um, we have some leaf lettuce. What part of a plant would leaf lettuce be? Our options, we've got roots, stem, leaf, flower, or fruit. Leaf lettuce, let's start easy here. Yep, definitely leaf of a plant, super easy. Let's do another one that everyone should recognize. How about an apple? What part of a plant do we have there? If we look at our old school chart here. What part of a plant would an apple be? Root, stem, leaf, flower, or fruit? Yep, super easy, fruit. Uh, let's do one more easy one. How about a carrot? Ah, we do have seeds in an apple. That's a good point. So the way you can tell a fruit is the fruit is the outside that's protecting some sort of seed, which is also why a tomato is a fruit. So we eat the apple, probably shouldn't eat the seeds. And our last one here, yep, carrot, definitely a root. Um, you can see on real carrots too, they have these fine roots. So the carrot itself is really a modified root, but definitely a root. Oh, I've got one more easy one here. Potato. This is a faux carrot. Um, so we have some, some models that we use in our programs, uh, but any kind of carrot is a root. And yep, y'all got it. Potato, definitely a root. All right, give me a wave or a heart if you're ready for some more difficult plants. All right, here we go. Celery, root, stem, Leaf, flower, or fruit? Celery, the part that we eat. What do you think on this one? Root, stem, leaf, flower, or fruit? Yep, y'all got it. This is a stem, so it's the stem part of the plant. We do have some leaves. You can eat those leaves too, but the main part that we eat is definitely a stem. Hmm. 
How about cauliflower? Definitely, definitely, definitely a clue in the name on this one. Cauliflower. What part of a plant? Yeah, surprisingly, this one is a flower. If you let it grow in your garden and let one of these go past the time when you would pick it to eat it, all these tiny pieces here are gonna spread out and actually you're gonna see those flowers pop out there. All right, we've got two more difficult ones here and then we're gonna head out into the garden and see what we can find. All right, how about this one? First of all, Oh, good question. So a celery root this from the same plant as the celery root we eat the stem. So celery root is actually celeriac. Um, you can look at that one on Google and see the difference there. So it's um, celeriac, C-E-L-E-R-I-A-C, celeriac. All right, what is this one? Anyone know? And if I turn my camera here, I'm actually gonna show you the plant in the garden. So it's that tall, spiky one over there. Anyone know what this is? Yeah, this is an artichoke, and you've got it, it's a flower. You can really see from the shape on the front um, that it looks a lot like a flower. So on this one, let's go jump into the garden and take a look at it as a living plant. And we just happen to have some right over here. Oh yeah, you can definitely eat the root on the artichoke too. All right, so I'm gonna flip this around and we're gonna take a look at an artichoke here in the garden. All right, there we go. So you can see the more immature fruit right here. As this grows, it gets right here. And then that model we saw as it's super ripe and ready to eat, these start spreading apart. But you can definitely see when you look at this whole plant that we've got a flower here. I'll step back so you can see the whole plant. We grow a close relative here in the garden too called Cardoon. And that one is native to Asia and you can actually eat all parts of that plant kind of at all times. So you can saute it, you can fry it, you can eat it fresh. Uh, it's a really cool plant. So when you're planting a winter veggie garden, take a look for Cardoon and you'll be surprised. All right, y'all ready for one more? Um, no, so the artichoke is actually a flower. And again, if you let it go, it's gonna open up and get those petals that you would see on any flower. All right, here we go. Uh, okay, Suzak, that is a great question. Is a pineapple a flower since it doesn't have any seeds? I'm gonna leave that one for you to research and find out. I have a few botanical shirts, thanks Thomas. All right, what do you think? What do we have here? Asparagus, and you've got it, it's a stem. Has anyone ever seen the Asparagus as a living plant, more than just cut in the grocery store. Anyone grow asparagus at home? Oh yeah, I guess this one was easier than you thought. So let's go and I'll show you a surprise. So we're gonna take this faux asparagus, leave it here, head back out into the garden and take a look at some asparagus that we've been growing all winter. All right, here we go. Oh, we've got one person that's seen it. I'm gonna flip the camera around and let you see. So you can see these are the stems that we eat in the asparagus. They definitely grow well here in Texas. Um, and so when you eat the stems, they've just started coming out of the ground and they just pop right off, just like that. But if you let them keep growing, they are going to turn into a pretty magnificent bloom. While they don't give you a lot of color, 
they give you a lot of drama in the garden. Um, it makes a really good background plant, but every year it'll keep coming back for you. Um, and the mound will just keep expanding year over year. So yeah, I'm gonna pull up one of these so you can see what happens as it gets bigger. So I'm standing here and this one is already about seven feet tall. Uh, pretty fascinating plant. You definitely do not want to eat this when it gets that big. It gets really tough and woody and it just doesn't taste very good. Um, so when you're harvesting your asparagus, you want to pull them when they're nice and short like this. Otherwise you end up with this really impressive six foot, seven foot tall blooming plant. All right, so I asked everybody to go to their kitchen and find some plants. I've shared a few here. Did anyone find something that I didn't share already that you want to talk about? Any other interesting plant parts that you found in your pantry or fridge? Ooh, Brussels sprouts. So I just had an interesting conversation about Brussels sprouts. Um, we've already pulled ours here in the garden. I'm taking a look just to make sure. Um, definitely a winter plant that you can grow. And so the Brussels sprouts are a really funky plant. Um, they're, they're modified growing off of the, the stem of the, of the plant itself. Um, they're not really a flower. They're not really a leaf. Um, definitely Brussels sprouts is an interesting one if you want to do some research and find out specifically what part of a plant they are, but they don't fit very nicely into any other ones. Bell peppers, yep, definitely a fruit. Ooh, yeah, broccoli, another good one. Um, if you grow broccoli, it's gonna turn just like that cauliflower and get all kinds of crazy blooms on it. Um, celery, yeah, if you miss celery, uh, it's the stem of the plant. All right, onions. I'm gonna flip this around so you can see some onions in full bloom. Again, you may have not seen an onion with a flower before. So this is what they look like when they're well past time to harvest and they have a flower at the top of the stalk. And you can see the bees love them. So I'm gonna get nice and close here. And does anyone want us to pull one of these out of the ground so we can take a look at it? Oscar, you found some green beans? Yep, those are a fruit. Tomato, also a fruit. Okay, we're gonna come over to this small onion here right on the edge, and we're gonna pull this guy out of the ground. Now, normally we're not allowed to be doing this. Got special permission from the horticulture team today. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this one out of the ground and take a look at it. All right, so what do you think? Which part of the onion do we eat? So if you eat things when it's past time for them to harvest, sometimes they just have a bitter taste or just don't taste like we're used to them tasting. Um, but with onions, you can give them a try and see. Oh, okay, Suzak, that's a good question too. I'm not sure. All right, so we have some votes for root on the onion. If you notice, it has a pretty strong root system below the portion that we actually eat, between the leaf and the dirt. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, so if, if I clear this off just a little bit, now um, this onion is a Tokyo long white, so it's sort of like a really large green onion. Um, the part that we eat on the green onion is pretty much from here all the way up, right? So, this really isn't the stem. The stem is, is just this little portion where the leaves start coming out. Um, so it, it is a modified root, sort of like the potato. Um, and it's one that you, we can't clearly say, oh, it's the roots or it's the stem. It's kind of that zone right between. Um, so they just say it's a modified root. Um, but you can see they actually have some pretty impressive root system here. Um, and on the green onion, you're gonna eat all of this greenery as well. Um, on a traditional onion, these don't have as much flavor, but you can definitely eat all parts of the onion plant. Um, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, so is the onion above the root or the root itself? It's just above the root, but it's below the stem, so it's sort of that in-between zone. 
Um, so it's not really clearly in one or the other. So this is a great one um, if you're teaching kids that you can talk about things don't always perfectly fit into those categories. And kids, if your teacher is talking to parts of a plant, onion is a great example to bring up to say, well, do they all fit perfectly into root or into stem? Because uh, it, it varies based on the plant. All right, so we're gonna walk and take a look at just a few of our other plants. Um, you can actually see our hydroponic towers. So we have our partner here from Carrollton Farmers Branch on the video. Hey, Christy. Um, these are how our towers are looking right now. So we'll come back and do a feature on these on another day, but I thought I'd let you take a look while we're here. So if anyone else found any other interesting plants and you wanna ask some questions, now's your chance. We'll do a few more minute walking tour here around the garden. So you can see on the front side closest to you, we've got lots of greens. And the other side, our summer crops are in. And you can see by those vines that we've got some sort of either cucumber or squash. Yeah, on our towers right now, we have some peas, um, a variety of beans. I have some squash seeds that I'm gonna put in later today. And those will really grow all the way through summer. And on here, we've got some red leaf lettuce, and then in the back, cilantro. And once again, we are in the incredible edible gallery in the Roy Meyer Children's Adventure Garden. And my name is Dustin Miller. I'm Director of Experience and Innovation. Uh, this is a really cool spot. You can see that we have three different plants planted here. We have a squash, we have some corn, and then we also have some beans. Anyone know what this combination of three plants is called? So we've got corn, squash, and beans. This is a really classic planting combination in Mesoamerica. Corn, squash, and beans. Now this is called the three sisters. So the corn gives the beans something to grow up on and the squash can fill in on the ground. If you have a pretty small area, um, this is a great way to really grow a wide variety of plants in a small spot. And once again, the, um, this goes back for centuries in Mesoamerica um, and are some pretty some pretty prevalent plants in Latin American cooking. All right, we've got just a few more to show you here before I need to sign off. We've got some radishes growing. What do you say we pull one of those up? Try to keep my shadow out of the screen. Ah, this one's too close. So dig around. So this one was just a little bit of a baby radish starting to form. Another interesting thing with radishes, you can actually grow those in a hydroponic tower too. You just have to pull them before they get too big. If you've never seen horseradish, this is what it looks like above the ground. And just like the potato, it's a tuber. And our last stop is one you may have never seen as a plant. This one is stevia. So this is our artificial sugar sweetener. Um, it's actually a natural way to get that, that sugar taste without all the chemicals that we use and things like like um, sweet and low. And so this one, you actually just harvest the leaf and you can dice it up and it gives you a natural sugar. So if you joined us about halfway through or you've been here for a while, uh, just a reminder, we do these every Friday at 10 a.m. Um, some sort of plant related theme 
and we try to incorporate things from your house. So for those of you that went to your fridge and pantry and shared what fruits and veggies you have right now, thank you so much. Um, also, every day on our website, if you go to our virtual visit page, there's a link to STEM in the Garden. We do a daily lesson with some sort of video or download that you can interact with at home. And go ahead and share those things with your family and friends. And also, if you wanna send us an email to show what you're doing with our content, you can shoot me an email at education at dallasarboretum.org. Once again, my name is Dustin Miller. You are in the incredible edible gallery in the Rory Myers Children's Adventure Garden. And this has been Plant Lab Live. Have a great holiday weekend, and we'll see you real soon.